Abdullah, has it started yet? Yes, I can start now. All right, thank you. Carrie, just to be sure, can you see my screen? Yep, I can see it. All right, thank you so much. So welcome to your first um, career challenge tutorial. So pretty much this tutorial is just to um, teach or let's say, show you how your assignments, your task is supposed to be done and pretty much hear feedback from you, listen to your questions in case you have problem with solving the challenge and that's about that. So the exercise for this career and for this career challenge is ideas to improve the world. This is basically a modification on the essay question on your application. So if you can remember part of your application, you're supposed to write an essay about using technology to solve a problem in your community, a problem that affects at least 5.5 5 million um, people. So I'll just get into that. Like I said, it is a modification of your essay. So this time, we're not expecting essays, we're expecting slides, which can either be PPT, that is PowerPoint presentation, or storyboards. So I'm going to give general tips in making a good slide. So firstly, each slide should not be too wordy, should include a title and a slide number. And by being by wordy, we mean this room be so much words on your slide, in about five seconds, five to ten seconds, any reader should be able to tell what a slide is saying. So like an essay where you can go ahead with words and paragraphs, a presentation, a slide, storyboard shouldn't have so much word. Each slide should have its own title. So like this slide, you're looking at the title here is slide making tips. So your challenge, so for every slide, you should put a title there. You should also include a slide number. This slide has number two as its slide number. Secondly, pictures or any additional element should be labeled as figures. In as much as we're expecting you to be creative, so if you include pictures of anything that would buttress or elaborate your point, please label it as figure. Say for slide one, you put if you have a picture, you can label it figure one, then subsequently, uh, subsequently you label it figure two, figure three, and so on. The third point here is, include sources of facts and reports you might do you might have to include some statistical facts or reports we would appreciate you reference this um fact because we're going to fact check them while we're grading also shy away from big words in as much as the whole concept of the technology application might be technical we also want you to uh, shy away from big words we don't want a situation where someone is reading your presentation and person has to check dictionary every two minutes or thereabouts. Comprehension and simplicity is key and we want to be able to compare whatever you're saying in your presentation. Number five, be creative and tell a story. Presentations generally just give you room to think outside of the box, put something that is definitely different from what an essay, definitely different from what an essay would show. In an essay, you can't really see how creative uh, a person is but with presentation you can see how creative it is uh, they are rather also tell a story when i'm simply saying you should say maybe um your dad did this or your father did this but we want to have um this storyline that it doesn't necessarily feel like we are just reading so we want to be involved in the content of your presentation number six spelling checks is important please use your punctuation, comma, full stop. Lastly, design and theme should be minimal. As much as you have said you should be creative, please understand that you shouldn't have so much element that would get distracted from the whole content itself. So now back to the exercise itself. What are we expecting from you? We want a clear and defined problem. I understand that there are so many sectors to pick from agriculture, education, economics, climate, but we want you to pick a very clear and defined problem. We want you to niche it down. Say, for instance, you pick agriculture. What are you looking at? 
are you saying soil? If you're saying soil, are you saying soil erosion? Are you saying soil mineralization? We want you to niche down the problem. Even if it's a broad problem, we want it to be clear and defined. We want to know who this problem is affecting the most, what target audience. Now, we want a solution and approach that is realistic, very realistic. Are you saying this is possible in 2022? Are you saying this is possible in 2023 or years to come? What technology will be in use? Specific technology. I understand that we're going to be talking about applications of data science, but we should also mention the specific form of technology we'll be using. Also, the resources you'll be using. Um, as much as this project is large, we understand that you need funding, you need aids, what kind of comms, what, what kind of communications do you need to be able to put um, these projects in place? So these are the primary factors we are expecting from the content of these slides or presentation that you'll be submitting. So this is a, an exercise layout guide. Um, as much as we want you to do what you want, but at the same time, we have decided to prepare a guide to just show you um, a sample of what we'll be expecting. So your slide one could pretty much cover, um, could pretty much be your cover page, which is just an introduction. You don't have to say my name is, just include your name, the title of your presentation, and the dates. I want to believe um, every one year, somehow, somehow, during their undergraduate years, come across, they've come across um, presentations during their defense or just normal um, class lectures and all of that. So, your cover page should be simple introduction. The slide two, this should include problem identification. So you've identified the problem, who, I, who is it affecting the most, who, who has problem, who has issues with, with this, uh, who has issues the most with this problem. The third slide will be your realistic solution and then the resources that would be used to put this real, um, solution into place. The fourth slide could include um, the comparison of your previous of previous solution methods to yours so what have they been using before to manage this problem and the problem you are suggesting now how makes it different is yours way better than that would yours yield better um, outcome would yours be better on the long run so we want you to compare the previous solution methods to the one you, you are suggesting the one you're putting in this um presentation for us then your fifth slide would be the after effect or usage prediction. So now that this, imagine the solution is in place now, what are the resulting effects? What are you expecting afterward? You can predict and say, oh, you, there's a likelihood for 50% increase in the yield or the outcome. So we want you to be able to say that if this thing is in place, this is what you expect. So now you have a problem you have the solution, you've compared it to the previous um, solution, what are you expecting afterward? We also want summary and or conclusion rather. So can you like marry up all these things and tell us, oh, this is the conclusion from all of this. We will also love to give a quick tip, which is prepare this as if you're going to present this at a conference or board of directors who is about to offer you grants. Say, for instance, the World Bank comes out today and say, oh, we're going to sponsor uh, 25 African youth. We're going to give them, say, 10 to $20 million for them to execute a project. Now, we need you to present what you want us to fund. What would you like to present to this board of directors? That is how professional we want you to be. We want you to be able, we want your slide um, techniques, slide preparation methods to be able to um, offer you funds at the end of the day when you want to request for grants and all of that. That is all from my end. Um, I understand that some people will have questions. Please note them down. Um, after Carrie um, goes through our own slides, we will take questions and that will be that. Thank you for listening.
Sorry, are you there? Yeah, give me a minute. All right. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, I can. Okay, um, so building on what Mariam said, um, doing presentations and proposals and all of that going forward is going to be very important for if your solution to whatever problem you've chosen is viable and you want to apply for funding at some point in the future, then you are going to have to know how to write in a way that helps you to get um, grant money or helps you to get a job or something. So what I'm covering now is professional writing. Um, and I think for your application essay, you were allowed to be very creative, um, but and, and you will have to be creative for the presentation that we requested in this exercise. But it is important to note that now, in the space that you are in now, you have to be able to write professionally. So professional writing, it's a writing style that is clear, concise, and it conveys information in a professional environment. So this is writing that you do at work in an office, uh, corresponding with business partners, with colleagues, with your boss, with your CEO. It's that kind of writing. Um, you use it when you're writing CVs, cover letters, reports, grants, presentations, and proposals. So it, it's going to be necessary for you to write professionally when you are um, finishing this presentation for us. Um, so it's important to note that you need to have the these goals in mind when you write is you need to be clearly understood, you need to be persuasive, and you need to maintain the reader's attention. So what that means is to be clearly understood, your writing needs to be understood by everybody, not just by a CEO, but by someone who has no idea what you're talking about, what someone who has no experience in your field. Um, and to be persuasive means that you need to write in a way that I, as a reader, wants to know more about what you are talking about. I want to be persuaded to continue reading. I want to be convinced that this is something I should invest my time and money in. And it's the same with maintaining the reader's attention. You need to write in a way that, you know, what makes the reader want to continue reading about your proposal, your solution, you know, what is important about the problem what is unique about the solution that you are going to pre be presenting so some tips for professional writing um you know mariam did say you wa we want you to tell a story um and i answered this in a comment um we don't necessarily mean you need to you know write an actual story but what we want is to feel connected to your to the problem that you're presenting and connected to the solution. Um, it needs to be relatable um, because, for example, possibly you're going to apply for a grant at a bank or a finance institution and you're, the person you're presenting to might not have any experience in the problem or solution that you're presenting, but they have a lot of money. So can you make it relatable enough for them to understand even though they've got no experience? So that's what we meant when we said, tell a story, make it relatable for us because we want to understand and know why and we want to be invested. So make sure that we are invested. So when it comes to professional writing, use short, simple sentences. Um, I would say eight to 10 words per sentence, but I feel like even 10 words, eight words is quite a lot. Um, use simple active words. Don't use long words. I think Mariam touched on this as well. Um, use less words. Um, be deliberate. So understand why you want to say what you want to say. What do you want to say and why do you want to say it? And then carefully choose words um, that convey your intentions. 
Don't use the same words over and over again. Don't repeat sentences and always proofread your work. Um, proofreading is very important because, you know, it's, it's sloppy work when your spelling is incorrect, when you've got grammatical errors, when you've got awkward sentences. So it's unprofessional, it's sloppy, it shows that you haven't put the necessary effort into your work for, for someone to be invested in it. Um, so for this exercise, you will have the opportunity to use storyboards or PowerPoint um, presentation. That's what you have to submit. Um, you're building on what your um, application essay is, so you really know what you're talking about. You you are you are intimate with the problem. You know the solution that you have chosen. So now you get to be creative, relatable, use images, you know, provide information, data sources. So um, as long as long as you follow these steps, you should be fine. And we've got some links here, which we are going to provide for you after the session, which will help you with, it will give you more info on provisional writing. Thank you, Kari. That was um, very straightforward. Okay, was it? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, do you want to talk about um, the feedback date and um, ending date before we go to Q and A? Because I think someone mentioned that um, on Slack. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you've already all received the exercise, right? Um, and if you haven't received the exercise. Um, please reach out to us or someone else on the team. Um, when you look, um, when you open the exercise, the first page has three dates. Um, and the first date is the first hand in, um, which I believe is tomorrow or today. No, it's um, today. Mm -hmm. Is it today? Yeah. So the first hand in is today. Um, the important thing for us with this exercise was um, giving feedback and assessing how well you respond and listen to feedback because that will show us where we need to assist you further. Um, so you will receive, you will hand in today, first hand in, receive feedback tomorrow, and then your final hand, hand in will be on Thursday. Um, the final end in after you receive your feedback, that's basically for you to fix whatever we, whatever comments we left on your project, and then fix it. And then on your final ending, we can assess how well you listen to the feedback. So if you were confused about those three dates on top of the assignment, then that is what that is: is the feedback portion. So essentially, what she's saying is, we're going to grade your initial work. They will give feedback. So when you work on that feedback, we're going to grade the after. So it comes in two ways. We want to see what you can do. Then we want to see how well you listen, um, how, how well you take feedback. Um, I think I will take a question in the chat box. Please, if you have questions, just wave them. We'll call your name to ask. So, so um, now I'm said, can you elaborate on the be creative and tell story point? I believe Carrie already answered the story point. What I mean by to be creative is, um, say for instance, you're going to talk about agriculture and you want to say the people that it affects. You might not necessarily have to pull words and be like, agriculture affects farmers, um, traders. You can easily do a chat. It's just like what I included in my slide three. You can have a circle saying agriculture and then put arrows saying it affects this. We want you to be creative. We want you to just play around with things aside from words themselves. I don't know if that answers the question. 
Um, thank you for the class. Could you please share the link to the document? Of course, we will share that on Slack after the section. Um, how should we break down the submission? I want to believe that is what I want to believe you're asking about the first um, first thing and feedback dates. If we have not answered it to your satisfaction, please wave your hand, then you can come up and ask properly. Is it a good idea to put outline in the presentation, especially I've if already, Maria, I've already answered that in the comments, all right, sorry. All right, all right, all right, thank you. Um, the submission schedules. Um, Biruk, I hope I'm pronouncing your name properly. Um, so this, they, you got your assignment today, you need to hand in the first hand in is today. Tomorrow we we will be grading it and then handing it back to you with feedback. Then you've got another chance to fix or implement the feedback that we gave you when we um, assessed you. And then on Thursday is the final hand in. Um, which is you don't really have a chance to fix anything after that. So it's important for you to mm. analyze the feedback we give you tomorrow and see what you need to fix, implement that, and then hand it back. So I hope that answers it. Um, PDF. So yeah, you're submitting in PDF, but it will have to be... Um, Mariam, it's Michael. You can you can convert PPT to PDF. Yes, it's it's yeah. gone. Yeah. After you've done your tasks, either using maybe PowerPoint or Google um, Google Slides, when you're done, you can save, download, and then convert to PDF. And it's, um, essentially, I think that's it. But essentially, what we want to see is slides, not Word documents. Yeah. Are there any other questions? You can raise your hand now or submit it in the messages. Or they can simply save them as PDF. Yes, that is another option. Thank you for that. Faiz, you have a question? Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, the, the, the assignment says to list uh, the ideas, not making presentations. So I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if we would be making a presentation or just listing the ideas as uh, the task uh, literally says. Okay, Faith, um, I think it, um, that's like an error with the technical support. It just, I think it just um, wrote that as um, the title of the tax or something where if you should go ahead and read all the instructions in the google doc you would understand that what we actually want is a concise presentation document not essentially listed presentation yes yeah like i said earlier it's a modification of your essay question so you're not listing thank out yeah thank you you're welcome jato you can go ahead please Yeah, hi. Um, good day, everyone. Um, my question might not be relevant, but I think since we're doing data, yeah. I should just ask. Yeah, I should just go ahead and ask. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm talking about uh, when it comes to security of our ideas. I mean, not maybe not looking up one day and seeing our ideas being used by someone else. How secure are we, or how sure are we that uh, ideas don't be or are secured with? Ten academy that you want to see your day on the presentation, and then maybe the next day you see someone else <laughs> launching it. <laughs> I don't know. Um, you know <laughs> okay, Carrie, you want to take that? Um, you've got. I, I believe. I think mm -hmm. it's worldwide, but I think that anything you create, you've got copyright over. Um, just naturally, if you created it, you've got copyright over it. Um, so you can definitely add a copyright page or copyright symbol to no. your work no. i if you are uncomfortable just ending it in like that but i think it is um 
I think it's like natural law or something could be wrong about this, but you've got copyright over anything you create. Um, even if you are never going to use it, even if it is, um, you know, even if it disappears into thin air, you, you've got copyright over it because you created it. So Okay. Okay, then great. Sounds good. I don't know if is, is there a place you can just like point us to where to get the copyright office. I don't know. I don't have any idea. I will put it in the it yeah, I'll put it in the week zero chat. Okay. All right then. Thank you so much. No deal. Yeah, I think in addition to that, nothing really beats originality. I don't essentially think um anyone is going to steal your idea in the sense that you're not really like putting out the blueprint. At the end of the day, you're not saying, oh, this is how you're going to execute everything. This slide yeah. is just going to give us like yeah. an overview of your idea, not essentially yeah. like your plans. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Oh, yeah. Thanks. So let me quickly take the questions in the chat box. I would also love to say that no question is stupid. Please, if you're shy to talk, you can easily include on um, the chat box. No question is small or big or ready to attend to all your needs in relation to this challenge so um okay i think carrie has answered the templates yeah does having a very long title have a better impact the question is does the title have to be long before we can understand it so when you're having a, a really um long title it makes the um cover page almost busy already like oh this title is already long so, but if it has to be long, I think you can still fine tune it and summarize it into fewer words, if that makes sense. Where we can, can I find? Can provide the feedback on the title and show oh, yeah, you they can, can yeah. it out. Yeah, you're right. You can find the challenge on Google Classroom. Can we change our original title from the first Google form? I'm um, sure that won't be an issue as long okay. as we know who you are from your yeah. application. Yeah. Please, if we if we skip your question, we are sorry. Please, can you type it in again? So, but I'm going to to be sure we've answered everything that is being asked. If this is probably your first time making a detailed um, presentation, on the Google Doc, we have a good number of resources. You can take your time and go through them, and then we kind of assure you that you will be able to start off. The idea is just to start. You don't have to be, you don't essentially have to make it perfect. Remember, we're going to give you feedback, but that doesn't mean you will still put in the work. Remember what Aaron has said from the onset, we need you to be focused and at least put in effort. So we're not expecting you to be perfect or be experts at these things. At the end of the year, you're here for, at the end of the day rather, you're here for this training. So you shouldn't beat yourself up. Do your best. We'll give you feedback and you work on the feedback. Um, Abraham, you can change your original title, but provide your name because so that we can just associate your idea with you and your your original first Google form. So just make sure your name is visible on the presentation. All right, thank Um, Yishak, um, prepare the presentation from the problem perspective. You need to identify the problem and make it understandable so that we know what you're talking about, but it is focusing on the solution. Um, we want to see that it's a realistic solution, that it's technology, that the technology that you're going to use is realistic. Um, so touch on the problem perspective definitely because we need that for context but the solution is more important just so that we can see where you are heading with 
your ideas. Mariam, can you assist the Desa with the equation, please? Okay. Um, how this? I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing this right. For day one, ideas that can improve the world and day two submit one page summary. It says one page. Would we use slide or only PDF document? I'm not sure I get this question right. Please, can you come up and ask? Or are you saying there's another exercise that requires you to submit a one page summary? If that is it, then it's totally different from the ideas to improve the world exercise. Because for the ideas to improve the world exercise, what we want is slides and more details has been um more details has been shared on the Google Doc that is talking about the assignment or the exercise rather. Um I think we can just double check what they're speaking about and then we'll communicate that in the um on Slack. week zero Slack okay. yeah. channel. Can the problem, can the project, okay. Um, for research or funding perspective, um, remember you are creating this presentation as if you are going to apply for this uh, funding um, from someone, um, but we need to we need to um, assess your analysis and understanding of the problem. So I don't think that funding plays a big role in this. Am I understanding you correctly? Is it finding or funding? If you can just put your mic on and explain that. Is it funding, Aaron? Okay. Um, if it is funding, yes, add that. Um, but that's not the point of this. Um, the point is we want to understand how well you understand the problem and the solution. Abdullah, please, how do we get the recordings of the meetings? They're in the YouTube. Okay, so the recording of the meeting will be available on the Ten Academy YouTube. Um, yes, Mary, the career assignment is what is due tonight. Um, Mariam and I are on the careers team, so we don't really know what's going on the, on, on the technical side of thing, things, but um, the career assignment, the first hand in is due today. Then you will receive feedback and you have the chance to fix anything that we've pointed out or that you aren't happy with, and then you've got another chance on Thursday, which will be the final end in. Um, yeah, so that, where can we find the sample? Um, are you speaking about the presentation slides that we did today or? Just be in there. Need just yeah. go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead and ask the question. Okay. Perhaps the person was in clear. Please go ahead.
Nijis or Nijis, please go ahead and ask your question. They left the meeting now, so I'm not okay. sure. Oh, I think the person is back. Oh, they're back. Hello? Hi, I can hear you. Oh, we can hear you, rather. Yeah, sorry, it's because of the uh, network. I mean, uh, previously, I don't, I don't know if I'm mistaken. I mean, uh, Mariam mentioned that if we are new for preparing PPTs, like uh, there is a sample. No, I said there are resources to guide mm -hmm. you on how to make slides. If you'd open the um, Google Doc in your Google Classroom, you would find where the details of the assignment are. So pretty much, we have links that will direct you to resources on how to create your maybe your first presentation, how to convert, how to convert essays to slides. So there isn't exactly a sample for you to maybe <laughs> modify to become yours. Did I answer right. your question? Yeah, uh, I mean, <laughs> I was kind of lost, I mean, because of uh, internet access. So can, can you brief, like, uh, the three stages, like, uh, we will submit today, then what will be next? Oh, you I'm submit sorry, today. it might be repeated. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. You would submit today. I and Carrie will give, will give feedback on your work. Then we'll send back to you. You work on the feedback. Say we say, oh, this slide is worthy. Oh, we need more pictures. We're just saying. We're not saying what that is what we'll be saying. But we're just saying you would work on the correction, then send back to us for final grading. Is that clear? Yeah. It, uh, the like question is today. Um, but right. um, remember, everyone, and this is for everyone. I understand that it's nerve-wracking or you might be anxious because you've got the assignment today and you need to hand it in today. Um, but remember, you are limited to five or six slides. The first slide has to just has to be your name and the title. The last slide has to be the conclusion. Then you've got three or four slides that you have to fill up and you cannot put too many words or things on those three or four slides. Then another point is you've already you already know what you're talking about. You already wrote an essay on this, so mm -hmm. it's very um, it's very maybe a bit rushed. But you got in here, you got into this program, which means that you have the skills to do a lot of work in a very small amount of time. But just remember, you already finished with two slides, the first slide and the last slide. The first slide must be your name and the title. The last slide is a conclusion. You already know what the conclusion is because you've all written an essay to get in here. So please don't be too anxious about it because if you panic, you are going to probably mess something up. Don't panic because you already know what you're talking about. All you have to do is focus on the three or four slides in between, and that's all you need to worry about. All right. So are we expected to focus on the technical stuff, or do we need to give some explanation about the problems and how we plan to solve the problem or how to address it? Yes. Yes, that's exactly it. Um, you need to focus on the problem but not too much we more uh, we are more interested in the solution and how you've analyzed the entire situation and if your solution is realistic um you don't uh, sorry to to go off this conversation quickly didier i'm sorry if i'm not pronouncing your name properly you don't you should title your slides but it doesn't really matter what the last slide's title is or name it's just so that we know it's a conclusion um so i hope that answers your questions about that um yeah this yeah, is not really definitely. the technical so when it comes when if if you are in a careers session or doing an exercise for careers then you don't really need to focus on the technical side too much because we don't deal with that. Thank you. Yeah, interestingly, um, the um, 
significance of this other side of the training is oh now you're going to be equipped with um these um data science courses and all but this side of the training is essentially preparing you to be professionals when you go out there and become these experts in your job so this is like the other aspect of it so you don't necessarily have to focus on the technicalities this is um or just trying to know you as an individual see how you would do well in the workspace later after your training someone is asking what if i do it in latex is latex a ppt software i'm not quite sure about this please you want to come up and elaborate that's coffee Okay, someone said latex, I think, cannot help you here. I'm not quite sure about this, but please, what we want to slide, and this could include slides and storyboards, and this could include PowerPoint presentation, Google, Google Slides. Those, are, those two are essentially um, software um, that are very easy and can really um, buttress what we're trying to ask for. Um, Sorry, something. Do yeah. you mean um Latex Beamer, Latex Editor? Um I don't think it matters what you use to make the the slides. Um so it just has to be slides and then in PDF form. But someone is saying here that it's for writing scientific documents and Yes, you will be getting a link to the recorded videos. Um, if it's for writing, you don't need to write a lot. This is not an essay. Um, I don't. I don't think it works since it's for. Um, yeah. Um, so in the Google Doc with this exercise, we provided quite a few links. On there's even templates. If you go more deeply into the Google Docs um, links, there are templates. They, it's pretty easy to follow. So I don't think you need the latex thing. So, so I think latex is suitable for more extended writing, which is not what we are looking for, for books and writing involving mathematical calculations. So I don't think that works. Another software that could probably work is Canva, but I think Canva is even more of the designing um, aspect of presentations. If you're going to be minimal with your design and at least focus on the core instructions, you can also use Canva. But I think PowerPoint and Google Slides would do the job perfectly. And like Carrie has said, there are templates for you to go through. You don't have to rely on them so much. Modify them to your own taste. And then do you. So all the links that we're speaking about now that, that shows you how to do the presentations is on the Google Doc right now. So if you are looking at the exercise, if you have the Google Doc open, the links are right in front of you. So if you follow some of the information on there, then you should be fine to do this. Um, we've got 15 minutes left. So if anyone has any other questions or concerns, now is the time to raise them or ask the questions. Okay, I would also love to say if... Okay, Alad Meji, please go ahead. Um, okay, thank you. Sorry, please, quick one. I want to ask about the Google Docs. Um, where was it shared? I think I missed that. Google Classroom. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So just to be sure we're following, if you 
not add um what's the word now if you get everything i and kara has been saying so far please can you write get it in the um chat box so we know um some people also we know people understand what we're saying so we know how to do better in our next tutorials and if you have if you want to suggest um anything to you can go ahead remember we're here for you so you don't have to worry if your complaints are too much please write get it if you get what we've been saying so far where is google docs can we find the resources it's on google classroom it's been attached there so you just have to download the or view the google docs then if you scroll through the five to six page document you would see all the resources you need to be able to carry out this um tax properly martin celine ken rick thank you I just thank you too. If you come across issues later on while you're probably working on the tax, do not hesitate to reach out to I and carry on Slack or um, type it in the week zero um, channel. Oh, this is a good one. What are the referencing styles we should use? Unlike, um, unlike um, scientific, writings or the others where you probably use APA other than it's like we don't necessarily need so much if you take something from say what can you reference now oh say for I example think they should just provide us with the links so you can provide us with the links that the reference or the resources you're referencing links on the conclusion page so okay image source maybe i think that works too say you get something from who you can easily just put source who you don't have to do like all oh, um upper other thing that we do in normal writings ultimately the referencing style you use is up to you but it just has to adhere to the guidelines that we um added to the assignment so the assignment is not just the questions and the links it also has specific guidelines that you have to follow yeah. um we in this session we are covering like the basic part of it but it requires you to read the actual google doc because i think there's a lot of information that we yeah we added a lot of information on how to do it and the guidelines okay this uh sorry if you say her, mm -hmm. her. <laughs> i'm so sorry i'm missing it. Sorry, please. <laughs> it's okay yeah, can you wait it's okay. please before you speak can you just tell me how to pronounce your name please <laughs> can you just tell me how to pronounce okay it? it's not a problem okay uh, my name is Fisa, okay. but okay, you can awesome. call me fish Thank you. Oh, okay <laughs> uh, i just have one question there's a kind of uh, mismatch between the uh, submission time on uh, Google Classroom and the uh, Ten Academy's Notion site. All uh, challenge submissions are noted to be ended at 8 p.m. on the Ten Academy Notion site from Monday to, uh, let me see, Friday. They all say uh, submission deadline, weekly challenge submission, all challenge submission is at 8 p.m. UTC, but for us it's uh, 11 p.m. But on the Google Classroom, it says due 11:59 p.m. There is a mismatch of 59 minutes. Which one do we use? Uh, use like an hour difference. Um, it should be yeah. It should be 8 p.m. on the Google Doc as well. 8 p.m. UTC on the Google Doc. So follow uh, that because uh, we did uh, that. And then we'll so speak to the person that does the Google Classroom stuff and we'll ask them to correct it. So I, I'm supposed to do that? I'm supposed to talk to them? Uh, no, you don't have to do it. Just um, submit it according to the dates that is on the notion, which says 8 p.m. UTC. Yeah. Just submit it according okay. to that. Okay, I thought that too. Thank you very much, Kay.
but I think this will confuse a lot of people which are not obviously in this uh, tutorial. So maybe a little help might help editing the time on the Google Classroom, yeah. right? Yeah, I'm gonna, we, Mariam and I will speak to the person okay. in charge of that and we'll put it in the Slack channel as well. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks. So Rana said, um, I had lost the connection. Could you summarize what the assignment consists of? All right. So first of all, to access um, the assignment, you need to go to Google Classroom. Um, attached there is a Google Doc that contains the assignment, the exercise itself, what we're expecting, and how it will be graded. But for the sake of this tutorial, we pretty much came here to talk about what we're actually expecting from you. We talked about the layout of the exercise. We said, um, because the instruction is at least five slides, not more than six, we said your first slide could be your cover page. The last slide could be your summary page. Then the slide in between will basically cover the problem you're identifying, the solution or approach to this problem, how you plan to fund, how you plan to fund or get resources for this technology that will be used to um, solve this problem and the aftermath from it like at the end of the day um, what is the progress going to look like um, Carrie also touched on professional writing mm -hmm. how you should be able to um, convey your words you should be deliberate with your words you shouldn't use big words you shouldn't repeat your words at the same time you should be able to you should be creative you should be able to tell a story um, essentially things that would guide you to be able to put out a good presentation is on the Google Doc because we have added resources for you to go through. This assignment is supposed to be submitted, uh, it's supposed to be done in a PPT that is uh, PowerPoint, but should be saved um, in a PDF. The deadline is later today. Well, we're going to work on feedback, come back to you, then you work on the feedback, then submit finally on Friday. Um, I don't know what else I've missed, but it's totally okay for you to come up and ask for anything that I didn't mention now. But pretty much, this exercise is a modification of the essay in your application, just to put that out there. Okay, um, so I just got um, an answer regarding the question about the time difference. So it's 8 p.m. UTC, which is about 11 p.m. Um, it's 11 p.m. whichever time. I think for Africa, it's around 11. But they give you an hour extra to hand it in, after which, if you don't hand it in after that hour has passed, you start to lose points. So um, you've got an hour after the 8 p.m. UTC deadline to hand it in, and then you don't lose any marks. So that is why there's a time difference, if that clarifies that. Okay, about the submission time again. So it is 8 p.m. UTC, which in Africa should be for us. I think it's like 11 p.m. around there. But on Google Classroom, it says 11.59 p.m. So you should submit it by 11 p.m., but you've got an hour afterwards. So from 11 to 11.59 p.m. to submit it without losing any points. If you submit it after 11.59 p.m., which is tomorrow, you, you start to lose points. But you've still got an hour if you are late. And then after that hour, which is at midnight, you start to lose points if you have submitted it late. So 
the hour is there to assist you if you need to do anything else or if you are a little bit late. Does that help? Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, that kind of uh, helps with the contradiction between the two times. And thank you very much for clearing that up. Hola, Mide. I think that is what Kari has been explaining. Kari, please, do you want to take it one more time? Um. Okay, so is it nine? Okay, do you understand then, uh, Ola Dimeji? I think I'm missing that up, but you understand it. Um, so yeah, you get an yeah. you get an hour. I think it's better um, to explain. Okay. Um. Yeah, I know it's it's confusing, but I guess we also weren't told about the hour issue. So I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry we didn't catch that sooner. Um. But basically, you've got an hour if you just light with it. <laughs> I think we have um, close to five minutes thereabouts before the end of the session. Um, on my side, it says four minutes. I'm at. 26 minutes pass so uh, you've got like four minutes if anyone has questions you've got you've got three minutes to ask them now before the session ends okay can we get let's go if you're ready to start working on your tax and hoping to get like good feedbacks it's good. Okay. Um, also, we are on Slack, so you can reach us there, and we will be providing feedback. And if we, so we all, you know, this is our job is to be there to help you guys. So we are on Slack. Um, so don't be afraid to reach out because yeah. we are supposed to help you to get through this. Um, we. Yeah, this is our job. So please do reach out on Slack. Okay, then everyone, um, good luck with your assignments. I'm going to, I think Mariam and I are going to check out of the session now, but we are available on Slack. Good luck. And it's not going to be that difficult. Remember, you already know what you're talking about. Okay, so good luck. All right, looking forward to your exercises. And we really hope. We really wish you guys the best. Take care.